is going on everybody lamont at large today i am in las vegas nevada right behind me used to be a taxi cab company called freest transportation i used to work there as a cab driver here in las vegas i'm going to take you to the location where i was almost shot and killed back in 2012. Uh, it's a very harrowing story a story that only i can tell let's get right into it we're gonna go back to the summer of 2012. now at that time how are you gonna get mad at that car what how is this guy gonna get mad at that you're the idiot that almost hit them You see, he's getting mad and it's summertime and you see, you see when that, that heat drives you crazy out here. Getting mad at that guy and he's the one, you're the one that almost hit him. Anyways, moving along. So we're going to go back to the summer of 2012. Now I just, by that month, that would be month number four that I had moved back to Las Vegas. For the previous two years, I was living out of my van in Los Angeles, California, wasting my life away. And I decided after turning myself into jail and cleaning up my probation, uh, I would come back out here to Las Vegas to further continuing my lifelong career of wasting my life away. Now, I came back to town and I said, if these guys give me my job back driving a taxi, then I will stay in Las Vegas. If they would not have given me my job back, I probably would have just started traveling east. So they gave me my job, my job back, and I started working back here. So Charles Frias was the former owner of this place. Uh, he had almost uh, 650 taxi cabs. Uh, divided amongst five different companies, but under one umbrella company. Now, the Las, Las Vegas Raiders have bought this property. I don't know what they use it for. Maybe overflow parking. I'm not really sure. But this was a taxi cab company, and I used to work here on and off uh, for probably, I don't know, four years or five years. So, I came here in July 2012. I got my taxi and i would leave out of that gate over there and then i would turn around i'd come around this way stop at that place every day to get my coffee and then i would start my day of driving a taxi in las vegas uh usually i worked anywhere from uh usually it was every six months you would change your schedule if you wanted so you know i was at that time i was probably working noon to midnight noon to midnight five days a week I was off Tuesdays and Wednesdays and that right there used to be the office for the uh, taxi cab company now it is a canvas for some uh, unknown uh, graffiti artist so let's go to the location and talk about where I got a gun pulled out on me and was almost killed picture it Sicily 1923 not really but so i'm in my taxi right and a taxi driver in las vegas you're not making very good money but i don't have any kids i don't have any bad habits so uh, i'm making out okay it's not like i'm going around blowing out all kinds of money everywhere going to clubs and stuff so i start my day normally i start working for the first two or three hours and then I probably stop for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes and then I just kind of cruise for the next four or five hours and then I try to finish up strong. I'm not a hard working guy. I mean, I Friday and Saturday, that those are my days where I make money, where I try to not take any breaks and I just try to work as hard as I can. The other days, I don't, you know, I care, but I'm not gonna stress myself out over some piddly little taxi cab job. So not very far from here we're going to go to the location of where an incident took place and i will say before we get there it's kind of my fault kind of sort of i'll take you over there by the way on a different note that's the orleans 
that we're driving up to right now, this is the same street that I was driving on when I found out that George Carlin died. On their uh, signage, uh, they had a rest in peace, George Carlin. And I said, what the hell, he died? And then as soon as I found out, I went on my phone and sure enough, he died. I believe he was supposed to have played at the Orleans that weekend uh, when we found out the tragic news. And let me tell you, uh, George Carlin, uh, one of my favorite comedians of all time, and uh, some people are just uh, so intelligent and so quick and witty. And uh, George uh, definitely was one of those guys. So every time I drive by the Orleans, I always think about that moment where I found out that he died. Right there, the Orleans. This is the corner of Twain Avenue and Wynn Road. Now, right now, if you're looking at this intersection, this is a pretty decent neighborhood, right? 25 years ago, this place was an absolute dump. Uh, there was drugs everywhere. Uh, people were getting robbed. People were getting killed. This was not a good neighborhood. When I would get a call for service and the cross streets was Twain and Wynn, cab drivers, they weren't picking it up because maybe somebody was trying to rob you or it was just a stupid call where somebody's calling. Let's say they live in that apartment building and they just want a quick ride to the to the Treasure Island of the Gold Coast, a five dollar ride. It just it really wasn't worth even bothering to answer a call over here. So by now, this is my third or fourth hour into my shift. So I get a call for service over on Decatur and Tropicana and I'm on my way there. So I get to this light and I'm in my taxi cab. It's a 2012 Chevy Malibu four cylinder. Has, has absolutely no power, no guts, no nothing to it. So I stop exactly where that black truck has stopped, right? So I stop there and I'm in a hurry because it's actually kind of busy and I just, I wanna, you know, make some money. So I'm stopped right where that truck is and then right behind me as this car is pulling up is a silver, from what I remember, a 2000 and it was a brand new Honda Accord, I believe. It was silver color, just like that color, same silver color. He pulls up right behind me and I'm waiting for the light to turn green. Now, you know, a lot of us sometimes, we're on our phone, we're at a light, we're looking at our Instagram, we're looking at our Facebook, see how many likes we got. And sometimes when you're looking at your phone, you hear a little beep and then it's time to go. Now, normally if, if that happens to me, hello, she, she knows me from my channel. So, by the way, if you're watching this video, shout out to you, what's up? I didn't get your name. So, I'm here, right? And I'm looking at the light, waiting for it to turn green. And as soon as it turns green, I'm talking about a split second, I hear a big old honk coming from the car right behind me. So I'm like, this guy's honking at me. Hey, this guy's honking at me over here. So he's honking at me. And I'm like, what the hell? I did it, the, the light, as soon as it turned green, honk. Like, what the hell are you doing? So me being the jackrabbit that I am, so I'm like, oh, okay, you wanna, you know, you wanna be a, a little smart guy? So I, I left my foot off the gas, off the brake, excuse me, and I go forward, but I go really slow. Now, mind you guys, it's July, it's about 108 degrees. Matter of fact, that could be the car right there. You never know, the car looks just like that. So, I let my foot off the brake, but I don't push the gas and I just kind of creak into the intersection. I'm just creaking into the intersection. And this guy starts honking at me again, honk, honk, and I'm, I'm, I'm right behind in the wheel just like this, and I'm going this fast. Honk, 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 honk. And I said, sorry, buddy, I can hear you, but my foot doesn't. <laughs> now I'm pissing him off. 
And so as I get to about this part of the intersection, then I lightly tap the gas, just ever so lightly. And this guy, so I pull over right here, right? So I pull over right here and now, you know, I'm, I'm pissed off. And I got a short temper, especially when it's hot. I'm not a violent person. I don't ever want to make it out like I'm violent or I'm a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy at all whatsoever. If I were a dog, I'd be a golden retriever, you know, but golden retrievers, they do bite. So I stop right here, right here. And this guy pulls up right alongside of me. And I'll never forget his ugly fat face. He was like, uh, uh, he looked like he was Latino, kind of dark skin, probably from the sun, from the tan. Uh, you could tell he was short, uh, greasy hair. He had glasses on. He was probably mid forties. And he said, <laughs> and he said something in Spanish. And here's, here's how I work. When it comes to fighting, um, if I need to defend myself, I'll throw them with anybody. But if you tell me, hey, meet me at the, meet me under the flag at three o'clock in school, I probably wasn't gonna meet you there because then I start thinking like, well, what if he knocks my teeth out? Then he start thinking, right? So I'm a spur of the moment kind of guy. I like to just get things over with and done now. But if I have a, you know, a chance to think like, this guy could have a gun, this guy could have a knife, I can get hurt, I can go to jail. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna do it. So I, I stop right here. I stop right here, I'm in my cab. And people think that I, because I drive a cab, that I'm, I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I, I was very dumb, I was very stupid. He, and he pulls right here, and we're right here. And he's like, bah, 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 bah. and I said, I said, you wanna get out? I said, what do you wanna do? You wanna get out? We'll pull over right there, we can get it on, whatever, I don't care. I'll throw him, I don't care. Let's do it. I said, what do you wanna do? What do you want to do just like that? That guy goes, pop! And everything slowed down. And I seen a bunch of smoke in the air, just a bunch of smoke. And I, my ears were ringing. You know that? And I'm like, it happened so quick, I, I, I didn't even register it. And I can smell like a, like gunpowder. And I look at my, my arm, it feels like somebody scratched me. And I look at my arm right there and there's blood. Not a lot, just it looked like, it looked like someone like a cat scratched me. And I said, and then I, and then it hits me. I see this guy's gun. He has a Glock. I'm guessing it was either a 40 cal or a nine millimeter pistol. And I said, this guy just shot at me. Like literally this guy just shot at me, shot at me. So I'm, I'm, I'm practically where that car is right there. I'm parked, that's where I'm parked with my cab, just right there, right? So immediately, and his car is just right there. It was just right there, right next to that car. That's, that's, that's exactly where we're at. So just like how that car's turning, I turn, but I pull over right here. So I pull over right here and like I'm still processing my my, my thoughts because I, ju I just got shot at and I'm like what what the hell do I do like I, I was dumbfounded so now I'm par I'm I'm facing this way I'm in my cab and this guy from behind me he he makes a u-turn and, and goes to that light that's Twain and he makes a right and as soon as he did that I put my car in drive well, I didn't, it wasn't screeching because it had no power, but I went and I turned, I made a U-turn and I started chasing his mother. The heat is on. I got so angry. That might've been the most angriest I've ever been in my life. Some guy just trying to kill me. 
So I'm in my cab and this guy, I, I, I want his, I want his buttocks. I want his buttocks. I had to take a break guys, it's really hot. I've seen the ice cream man, so I, I got an Italian ice. These are so good. These are way better than Slurpees. Uh, wait a minute. I'm angry. This guy just, I don't have time for that. Well, I'll eat it later. I don't have time for this. This guy just freaking shot at me and I'm chasing the junk out of him. He's not gonna get away with this. He's not gonna get away with this. Let's go get this mofo now. So now this guy, he makes a right on Twain and I am right on his tail. So he is driving, 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 driving. Now this guy, by now, he's way up ahead. He's probably at least, I don't know, a, a good 20 seconds ahead of me. He stops here at Valley View and his light is green. So he just makes a, just makes a right hand turn right on this street. So we're driving, 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 and now this guy is driving, probably now he's doing about 80 miles an hour. And I literally have my foot on the gas. In one hand, I got 911 on my phone, and in my other hand, I have my dispatch. And I radio my dispatch and I said, yeah, this is uh, cab number 4805, I just got shot at, right? And I didn't really know the dispatch, but I knew her voice and you know we've kind of communicated throughout the years. She goes, 4805, where are you? And I said, I'm on uh, Valley View and I'm making a ride out to Spring Mountain. I'm chasing him. And she's like, 4805, don't chase him. Don't chase him. And I said, listen, lady. I said, listen, tuts. Well, I didn't say that, but I, I said, well, I, I think I ignored her because you know, listen, I wasn't trying to let this guy get away with shooting at me. I mean, this guy literally tried to kill me. So we make a right hand turn onto this street. And when I make a right, this guy is just booking it, booking it, booking it. This guy makes a left right onto this street right here. Like, <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, and I'm just like my engine, I'm just like going, 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 going. And my van, excuse me, I keep bad habit. My car, my taxi cab, it just has no power. So this guy comes up, this is Desert Inn right here. Now Desert Inn, it goes under the strip and it doesn't have any lights for about maybe one mile. So this guy, without missing a beat, he doesn't even care if he hits or kills anybody. So he goes right out here and let me tell you, by now, when I, when I made that right hand turn and I see him, he was doing, I kid you not, 120 miles an hour. He was going so fast, this curve right here, I thought he was gonna go flying off of it over the, uh, over the overpass. By this time now, I lost sight of him. I don't know where he is. He is going so fast, he's gonna kill somebody. Because, like I said, about a, I'm gonna say probably less than a mile now is gonna be a light and that's paradise. And I'm on the phone with the police. They're asking me where I'm at. I'm saying I'm eastbound on Desert Inn, I'm passing the strip. And it was at this point, there was gonna be no way I could catch him. I was barely, that taxi cab was so slow. I was barely doing 75 miles an hour. This guy was flying he was flying and he just that was it he just got away from me and back there about 20 seconds back that was the last time i ever seen that car he was gone like fast and the furious well that's the end of the story yep that's all i got for you kids i couldn't i couldn't catch him he was going way too fast that was it kids now I'm just sitting here in traffic eating an Italian ice. So eventually I pulled over to the convention center, which is right here. And I waited for the police. 
they took a police report. I told them what he looked like, what kind of car he was driving, but I really wasn't sure if it was a Honda Accord or a Toyota uh, Camry. All I knew is the guy looked Latino uh, and uh, he, uh, he had an accent about maybe mid 40s, could have been uh, even 50. With greasy hair. Uh, so I'll never forget that greasy hair. It looked like he took a bottle of Crisco, dipped his comb into it, and just started brushing away. He looked like a like a like a dropout cholo from Los Angeles, circa 1982. So that was it. I, I took the taxi. I brought it back to the yard. It had a bullet hole in the door. <laughs> and guess what? The bullet hole, if you would have lined it up, it was right up with my head. So imagine I'm sitting right here where my head would be, and then it was like three feet down, and it was at the bottom of the door. So in hindsight, I guess that guy just meant to scare me, because I guess if he wanted to kill me, he would have killed me. So anyway, so here, take a little bit of advice for me. I'm a little older than some of you, but some of you are a little older than me, and I always... I always take, uh, you know, I always try to learn something from people and I hope that sometimes people will learn something from me. Let me tell you something. This heat drives anybody crazy. I mean, road rage and all of that and what have you. And listen, it's not worth it at the end of the day. I learned my lesson after that. I kind of, you know, well, not kind of, I calmed down a lot on the whole road rage thing. Uh, now when I get mad at somebody, I just kind of, I mean, I've had my, I've had my moments where I flip somebody off. But for the most part, I just, I keep it pushing because, you know, we live in a society now where, you know, it seems like there's like more people are carrying guns and not law abiding citizens. I'm talking about criminals and, and scumbags and, and, and thugs and crooks. And you never know who's carrying a gun. You got all these little kids, 15 year old kids uh, listening to rap music, carrying guns, just not worth it, you know. If, if I get somebody mad dogging me or looking at me, giving me the eye, can I cut them off or so? It ain't even worth it because nobody wants to fight anymore. Everybody just wants to sh start shooting. Everybody just wants to start shooting up the place like it's cowboys and Indians, except for when you get shot, you don't get to take off your costume and go home. You get shot, you get shot and they shoot you in the wrong place and you're, you're a dead man, dead man on the ground. So just keep it, keep it safe guys. You could be the toughest guy on the block. It's not worth it. Just, just keep it pushing. All right, guys. I am out of here. I am going to the Boulevard Mall. Uh, there's a guy uh, out there. Uh, if you're in Las Vegas and you're close to the Boulevard Mall, go check out this one guy's little like place at the food court. It's pretty good. Uh, good food. and it Reminds me of like an old-style hamburger stand from Los Angeles, circa 1988. Catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.